Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with Chad. Chad runs DSV2 Media. Now, just to give you a little bit of idea of what they do, they manage an average of $500,000 monthly in campaign traffic. And Chad's such a nice guy, but he still has to turn down several clients a month because for them, it has to be a perfect fit for both parties. And Chad's gonna tell us about um, you know, top advice for founders, things that, you know, often we learn our most valuable lessons that allow us to grow when we make mistakes. So I was especially excited to have Chad share with us some of the big lessons he learned from some of the mistakes he's made. And I always like to include a fun fact. And a fun fact about Chad, he's got a couple fun facts, but one of them is he loves sardines and he's a kind of sore of sardines to the point where he likes bristling Nordic double layer in olive oil or spring water and it has to be bright silver. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so, Chad, I want to hear some of the things we can learn from you. What are two of the biggest mistakes that you've made that you've learned from? Okay, so uh, the first one that I would say is um, it was the first uh, you know larger media buy that I did, and so at the time it was I think it was around a fifteen thousand dollar buy, and that was larger for me at the time, and. Um, what I learned from that is nobody cares about your money as much as you. And what happened in that buy was I was watching the media buy. I was looking at my, this is when I was just an affiliate, and I was looking at my revenue at the affiliate network. And I was seeing that we were converting, we're making sales, but it wasn't profitable. Whereas the sales being generated from the traffic network, they were saying, well, it is, and it's trending upwards, and it is, you should be profitable, so there's a break somewhere. Okay? I basically got sold really well by the guy who was managing it at the traffic network. Okay? At the end of the day, these guys are sales guys. I'm not saying he lied, but... I should look at the data and I should just look at numbers and be a slave just to numbers and that's what I do and anytime I I've gotten emotional where I'm just like okay well we'll let it run a bit more all of a sudden we lost about seven eight grand on this first buy it never should have got to that point ever so that's definitely the first one what was the break what was the difference that he was seeing from what you were saying uh, it was um, that's a good question it was maybe a 50 maybe 45 to 50 percent difference in revenue like it made it made a difference it made a difference between losing and just being above break even which would which would you know allow me to start doing more optimizations it just wasn't it was irresponsible of me to to hold on to that campaign and just let it run so yeah yeah so that's a good one to know because we do get emotional with decisions we make and like oh right. just a little bit longer or i'll just wait it out um yeah. what's the second big one that you learned from uh, you know, the second one is just, you know, doing $10 tasks when, you know, you want to make like a thousand bucks an hour or whatever it is. And so I was just, um, you know, I was working on a client campaign. This is when I first took on clients before I, you know, I was coming out of hustle mode, being just an affiliate. You're always grinding on your own stuff. And then I go into the client stuff and try to do that. And I was just, you know, creating ads and, you know, I'd make 40 ads in one day and then I'd up upload them. And it just, that's stuff that could be done by hiring someone for 15 to 20 bucks an hour. I show them the type of ads I like. I give them the ad copy and they can bang out ads all day. And so it just, I got no, you know, anytime I've, I've been stuck in this box of doing this, this stuff, this minutiae that could be done by somebody else, I don't get anywhere. And so the more I focus on the big leverage points, the relationships with traffic sources, that sort of stuff, that's when life gets easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to do, though, sometimes. You know, you're, Absolutely. you're so used to doing it and you know you're going to do it well, so you almost don't want to let go of it sometimes. How do, you get, how do you get to that point where you let go of it? Because that's a hard point to kind of get past. In my business, it's um, it's because I know that uh, there's certain elements of an ad, for example, are more important than others. So it comes down to just uh, identifying what's most important and then what's just like urgent to get up and done, right? You know what I mean? Uh, so most important on the ad would be like the copy of it, you know, like the headline and that sort of thing but the actual building of it in photoshop or whatever else like anybody can do they have software programs that could lay it out you know right. so where is my time best spent and nowadays like i know that i'm not the the greatest copywriter so i would have a copywriter do it as well because that is a good skill to pay for it might cost you you know um it might cost you 100 bucks an hour but 
that type of skill is very unique, right? So it just comes down to what's really important. Like, you know, be brutally honest with yourself. Don't be like, oh, I got to answer this email and blah, blah, blah. And no, you don't really have to. You're doing that for that endorphin rush of checking your email or whatever. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so what's, going from the, some of those mistakes, what's a milestone that you're especially proud of that you accomplished after learning from one of those mistakes? Yeah, um, well, the, the big one of just when I just started to hire more people was uh, in November of this past year, uh, it was around October, November, I, I, I was in kind of an accountability group with my buddy. He's just like, hey, I need somebody to keep me accountable. And I'm usually good with accountability, but I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, I'll, I'll, write, I'll say a goal that I should do too. And um, my goal was by January, so just a, you know, a couple months, two, three months later, I wanted to be able to... Um, increase my profits and revenue by about, you know, 20 to 30% if I could and lower my hours worked per week till 30 if possible, if I could do them both at the same time. And, um, I hit the, I, I got it. Like I was around 20% increase in, in profits and revenue. Uh, it actually grew because that was when I, you know, I started working with these few key traffic sources, but I was able to lower my hours worked. That was when I was in Costa Rica for a couple months. And so I was able to lower my hours worked because these traffic sources I try to focus on are a little more hands off. So wait, yeah. so how did you get to that point? Uh, well, number one was, um, you know, again, focusing on the really important things, right? So, so I, I wasn't making the ads anymore. I had a guy, I had a couple guys actually managing the campaigns and doing the ads. What they would do is they would send me a report every, uh, every second day or so. Right. And I would just look at the report and I would say, okay, kill this ad, this ad, this ad, this ad, this ad strong, make variations of that one. That's it. Go. That email would take me about five minutes to make. Right. So most of my time in those 30 hours was then um, setting up new buys and just researching for more traffic sources. Yeah. So, so that was really where. So just again, focusing on what was important, paying other people. I mean, you know, it cost, it cost me uh, what, like two grand a month for that guy. You know what I mean? And he's, so strong for that one guy another guy cost me like you know another 1200 1400 they're working almost part-time but the leverage we have is like you know just more than full-time even so yeah so i have one last question for you before i ask it um just tell us a little bit about your business and what you're working on now that's exciting Okay, for sure. So, you know, we're, we we still have a couple clients that we manage. We don't take on too many, but um, for us, like in-house is what we're focusing on health offers. We have a, uh, we have a, a weight loss offer uh, coming out and uh, I'm working with some guy, guys on a testosterone offer as well uh, to help them out with that. And, um, you know, again, trying to just position myself where I keep doing what I'm doing now, but I get rev shares in these companies that could we could later sell and stuff. So that's uh, that's now the next step for me. So I'm really excited about that. And um, we have uh, version two of our, of our Traffic Black Book program that's coming out. Uh, um, it's going to be featured by TechCrunch on their Crunch U thing for May 8th. And then um, they're going to have a 30-day exclusive focusing on us and only one other product. So that's very cool. That's and, great. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about that. So tell, tell us what is that what does that entail? Like what is that product? What it will do for people? Yeah, no, um, Traffic Black Book, uh, the original one was more focused at affiliates and um, it was basically like my mission to teach people how to do this stuff properly uh, because there was a lot of junk at the time. Now, it got really popular. The second version now is more focused on, um, you know, small business owners, mediapreneurs, uh, you know, info product owners, supplement owners, whatever, uh, guys that have an actual sales funnel and that sort of thing. And what it is, it's um, it's a collaborative effort between myself, a guy named Mike Colello from AdBeat, and a few other uh, really smart guys, media buyers, retargeters. And we basically teach nuts and bolts, like it's a master class of how to buy traffic and um, build sales funnels for paid traffic because it's a little different. That's where usually people stumble. And um, I think it's about 18 hours of instruction between all of us and it's wow. just it's a legit master class like somebody went through that they would know how to do it and uh, what to do and how to do it and um people ask me like why would you create your own uh, competition for yourself they haven't seen just how much traffic you can buy so i'm not <laughs> I'm, I'm never really worried about about that so what's so, the website where people can check it out uh, it'll be uh, www.trafficblackbook.com Perfect. And then last question for you, 
Chad, which I think people will be really interested in hearing. You're an um, MMA fighter. What's, yeah. been the, what's been your toughest match? And what happened? Do you remember it? Yeah, I do. Um, well, there was a couple tough ones, but this one in particular was against a guy named uh, Yves Jabouin. And he uh, he's in the UFC right now. Actually, he's one of the top 135ers there. And we had a really good fight. A lot of a lot of people were saying it was you know fight of the year in Canada. This was back in 2005. Um, it was February, so fight of the year. I don't know. You know, it's just two months. <laughs> it was January 1st. <laughs> I, I always I always think about that. But um, it was a really really good fight. And um, you know, it just what happened. Like uh, I actually got knocked down in that fight in the last round with like I think maybe a minute left or so. Right? I didn't got n- knocked out. I've never actually lost consciousness surprisingly, but <laughs> but um, got knocked down. It was just a, like a brutal like tough fight for both of us. Like I my nose was I looked like the elephant man after my nose was smashed and everything. And it's just um, you know he said after that was the toughest. That was his first really tough fight. A guy that took him into deep water and and. Um, it was cool because I got to see like what level I could hang at, and um, and uh, yeah, so it's cool because he's he's in the UFC now, and I've now rekindled the passion a bit. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Don't mess with Chad. Thanks for sharing. Check out uh, when they come out with their new product, and um, I appreciate your time, Chad. Have a wonderful day. Absolutely, man. No problem. See ya. <laughs>